So good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. This is our last uh, MUG or Monday User Group webinar for 2022. Um, thank you for joining us. I know that everybody's really busy with getting things organised between end of the year and Christmas, so it's 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 a busy time. Um, I just want to kind of run through our presenters and who's going to be talking about what. Um, so it's myself, Ralph. I'm a product consultant for Providence CRM, who are platinum partners for Monday. And I am very fortunate to be joined by Candy, who is our head of customer success for Providence CRM, and the boss, the CEO, John Malone, who's uh, with us today. And we're very fortunate to welcome Anna, who is um, a channel partner associate for Monday.com. This is Anna's first, but not probably not last, uh, user group and um, so she's very welcome with us today. Just a couple of housekeeping rules and um, just to kind of go through things. This is going to be a 30 minute interactive demo. We really want you to feel engaged, ask your questions, don't hesitate about opening up, un unmuting yourself or open up your camera if you'd like. Ask us anything with regards to monday.com and hopefully we'll be able to answer it then and there. If not, certainly we'll come back to you with the answers. Um, this is going to be recorded and all the attendees will receive a video recording within 24 hours. Finally, we're going to have a, send you out a survey. It's just a real kind of Q&A. We love feedback. We love to know where we're going with it, what you'd like to see and any kind of updates or anything that are going to be going on with regards to Monday. So with that being said, I'm going to start welcoming Candy, who's going to run through Workforms. Workforms has moved on heavily. Uh, in 2022 and there's a lot of updates that I know we want to share with you. So Candy, uh, if you want to go ahead. Hi everyone. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to present today the work form. So many of you already are using the form, which is a slightly different and I'm going to show you why. So Monday have a work form, which is a standard product. Um, so as you know, Monday launched this year different products uh, for project management, for marketing, sales, and so on. So they have now a standard alone product, which is called a uh, work from. So do you act, actually, if it, can you see all my screen? Yeah. It's yeah. Okay. okay, perfect. So you can see here, um, I can go here and I can actually go to the different products in here and then one forms is one of them. So if I go and open in here, you're going to see it's a new complete layout. You can have you know, create a form from scratch or you can have uh, all the different, you can use the different um, templates that they have there. And then as well, you can scroll down, you can see all the different forms that you are, the team has created in the account, which is really, really good as well to see all of them in one place. And then the amazing thing about this, like I'm going to just create one from scratch so you can see how it works. Um, is that you can customize even more than before, right? So you, you can see that it's, it's a little bit, it's, it's the same here. You can add your logo, <clears throat> you can build your questions. So it's all the same questions as well. So for example, I can put a short test in here, but then the good thing about this is that you can add image or you can add color, for example, if the color of your company is red, you can use that one. If you're working with different clients and you're, I don't know, Pepsi Cola or Amazon, you can actually add their logos in here and it can look something like this. So it's kind of cool. It's very um, personalized as well. And I really, really like this. Then as well, you can position the, 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 um, the form in different ways. You can put them on the on the left, in the middle and the, on the right. Uh, and then as well, I think some of my clients were asking for this. They wanted to change the, the, the type of uh, font and then you can use them now in here as well. So very different from the normal form. Um, and then as well, if you go to customize, so you have all those different tabs in here that you can use as well. So this is the customized uh, form, right? So you can see how it looks in your computer or how it's going to look in the mobile for clients, which is uh, amazing too. And then in here you can customize. Th these are some of the um, options that you already have in the form um, in, in the main board, but then like you have a few other extras bits in here, so you can actually add and let me see here. Oh, sorry, so you can add make this anonymous. You can present this as a survey. You can hide the logo, the Monday logo if you want to as well. And then after the submission, you have a couple of other steps that you can you can as well add into that. You can customize the title to say thank you. So this is the, the message in the end um, and so on. So I think there is another one here. I, let me see if I'm missing it. Um, 
one sec. Yeah. No, there, is, there are the three, the, the two different um, part to customize the form. And then you have to let the publish. So actually like some um, Monday add a new feature that when the link is too big or too long, we can short them and make it shorter as well. And then you can embed them in, in different um, social tools. And then the form have restrictions too. So you can short, uh, you can show the recap challenge. You can restrain the form to accounts member only too. And you can um, redirect the, the account member if they are not assigned to it too. So there is a, like three different restrictions for that, that there wasn't in the, in the previous one. And then again, you can see the results of the form as well. And you can see a summary. You can see, uh, I'm just gonna do an example here. I'm gonna build this. I'm gonna add, sorry. I'm going to add a multi selection and I'm going to preview my form. And this is the way it's going to look. And then I can add my name in here. I can add an option and I can su submit my form. And then I can go to my actual form and I can see my results. OK, so I can see that someone already reply and I can actually see like a board in here and I can use automations, right? So automation is the way to go. You want to when you receive a new item, you want to assign that item to someone. You want to notify someone about that specific item and it's, you know, it, it what makes Monday Monday, right? So you want to really um, automate all the process so you can use that and um, the same type of um, automations that you have in your board. You can use it for the form too. Um, and I think that is it about the work from and um, just to let you know, sorry, I'm just going to start sharing here just to let you know that this is completely new in Monday um, and they're, they're still working on it so that there will be a couple of changes. Some of your account don't have the work from already. So if you don't have it, just get in contact with me and I will be able to grant them in your account. And if you want to go more deeply into how does it work, we can have a separate call as well. So that's it for me. That's, Thanks. That's brilliant. Thanks for that, Candy. Yeah, work forms has really taken on a big step in 2022 and I expect 2023 it's going to grow even further. So I'm going to go and spend just a couple of minutes discussing questions that have come in from our users regarding permissions and who can access what within boards and assigning teams within that board. So subject to all going well, you should be able to see my screen that says deal trackers. Can you all see that? Yeah? Yes, all good. Perfect. So what are permissions and users within an account? So really down at the bottom left here, we have our avatar. And the avatar, when we go into our into our admin, will allow us to see what users are in charge of what. So in this case, we've got a few different users. Johnny Sexton's joined the company, a few others, and but we can see here. I'm, who's I'm, in, I'm, sorry, I'm uh, not seeing your screen there. Are you sharing something there? I am. No, I can see it. I can see it as well. All right, yeah. okay, it must be me. Apologies. No worries, no worries at all. So we've got our user management screen, and this is basically who's on our account and who's at what user type level. So in this case, we've got John, Martin, Leticia, myself, Jenny Sexton, Candy, and they're all various user types. And this, I think, where a lot of people have been kind of confused by who can do what and where. So admins are basically like super users. It's the simplest way of thinking of it. So they can create and edit any contact content, but they can also manage the security and billing of the account. So for anybody that's going to be signing up to a company, you are obviously going to want to have a super user within that. Then we have members, members within our own organization. So within your company, staff members that are going to be allowed to create and edit any content. If we want to have a scenario where external providers or customers are go, going to want to see information, we can send them out a board, we can send them out information that they can read only but not edit. And finally, guests. And this I think is there the confusion has been between viewer and guests. Guests cannot change we cannot change a user into a guest where their email domain and account domain are the same. So in my case, it's Provident CRM. I can't be a guest. I have to be a member. And we want to just kind of clear that confusion up for some people because a lot of people have come back and basically said, oh, yeah, but they're only part of the business for a certain length of time. Understood, but they're still technically a user. Now, 
we can add and remove users from the account as well, which is important because when we want to remove somebody, in this case, John, you'll, I won't remove you, but just to highlight, we want to deactivate that user. So we want to remove them from that board and remove them from your seats that you're basically paying your money for. So clearing this up, I think, is going to help a lot of people to understand when and where people are allowed to use that. The other question that has come in an awful lot has been regards to Teams. And Teams are a really powerful tool within, tool within Monday. Once we start to create Teams within Monday, we're going to be able to assign boards privately. We're going to be able to allocate Teams to that board. So in this case, we've got four different teams on this. We've got our sales team, our mug team, and our mug team is just literally myself and Candy so far. We have our main Monday team, and then we have our admin team. These are just examples of showing when and where people can be put onto the onto an account. And in this case, on our deals tracker, we have Ralph and Candy who are assigned to this. But if we want to basically bring in the entire team, we can invite them here. And in this case, we can just literally go in and we can go uh, onto the admin team. We can put in the admin team. We can put in the Monday team, whomever we want to have on that. But when we do that, we can place them in here and then we can see who the members are within that team. So to get a quick snapshot of what's going on and get an overview, that would be a great way of being able to see that. Those are the kind of main questions that have been coming in. I just wanted to kind of clarify and clear up any confusion that has been going on with that, because I think going forward, having that kind of information to hand is going to be really helpful and hopefully allow people to see what's going on within it. I'm going to pass over now to Anna, who's going to do a very quick update with regards to an integration that's happening regarding Salesforce and how that has really improved over the last year. So, Anna, over to you. Hi, everyone. Uh, can you see my screen all right? We can see you. Uh, yeah, I don't see your screen. You can see my screen, right? Yeah, yeah great. No. So, um, no, we can't. Ah, you can't. Uh, OK, just one moment. Maybe Leticia can help me then uh, with the. Sure. Thing. I'll pop in. I'll uh, just put the slides here. The joy of technology. It always runs so smoothly, doesn't it? We'll get there. Amazing. Thank you very much. So hi everyone, uh, thank you Ralph for introducing me. So today we'll talk about the new feature that we have and it is Salesforce integration. So Salesforce, as you all know, is a sales process management tool that helps you track leads, manage your sales cycle from start to finish. Now with our Salesforce integration, you can streamline your customer relationship management process by incorporating valuable lead information into monday.com. Next slide, please. Mm. This integration is only available on our current enterprise plan. In order to set up integration, you must also have a Salesforce subscription of Enterprise Unlimited. Unfortunately, to date, Salesforce does not support integration on its essentials or professional plans. Next slide, please. Uh, we currently have only two workflows that we definitely recommend for smaller businesses. If you need help building custom integrations, Provident can offer paid assistance to accommodate larger requests and make the flow work the best for your business. And next slide, please. And uh, also there is detailed information and step-by-step -step guidance on how to add the Salesforce integration to your Monday.com instance. I will share the link now in the chat straight away. And uh, also, if there are any further questions, we can set up some time together to go into more detailed discussion on how it can benefit your business. Thank you, guys. Thank and you, Anna, for that. The link in the chat straight away now. Right, there we go. Lovely. That's great. Thank you for that, Anna. Really appreciate that. And it's good to see that Salesforce and integrated is integrating even better with Monday these days. So finally. I suppose the star of the show today, he'll love that analogy, um, is formulas, which are a real powerful tool within Monday. And I know John's excited to kind of show what's going on with that. So, John, over to you regarding formulas and Monday.com. Thanks, Ralph. You can hear me OK. Can you see my screen? 
yes, yes. and yes. Great. OK, well, uh, thanks for everyone for hanging on this far in the mug. Uh, hopefully um, you've found something valuable so far. So I'm just going to give a, a quick run through on formulas and how you might use them. Um, you know, we use formulas in Monday boards to do calculations. Um, we can also, you know, check statuses and various other things. So I'm going to just really quickly run through uh, some basics and start with like what a, a formula is. I suppose there are some rules you should know about if you're building uh, boards with formulas around what types of columns are compatible. Also the limitations, um, so what you can and can't do. And then also a few little tidbits on hidden functions and a few examples on how you might use them as well. Um, so we'll start with a simple formula. Um, Ralph actually said to me earlier that he'd like to implement one of these. Um, so actually, no, only joking. So um, we won't be doing any uh, complex derivatives today. Um, but uh, I suppose, what is a formula and what does it look like? So I suppose a at a very basic level, you could have two number formulas or two number uh, columns and you might want to multiply them one by the other. Um, another example might be um, if you want to compare to check to see if something is equal to something else or greater than or equal to. So we call them logic functions. I'll just um, I'll, I'll post a, a link to the some of these uh, links as we go. Um, so uh, I'll, what I'll do is I'll just show you very quickly an example of these two that we have here. So um, if I jump in here to an example formula board I have here. So to start with, I'm going to do some numericals. So I need two numbers to multiply. So I have two fields here, number, numbers and numbers one. OK, and I've numbers within them um, now. And then I have a formula. What, this, this first one here, if I click on it, I'm just checking to see if they're equal to each other or not. So the, the you know, the, the formula or the question is, is numbers equal to numbers one? Um, and one of the, I suppose, a tidbit if you're working with formulas is that you need to know the actual name of the the column name. So in this case, uh, of numbers and numbers one, and they are the same. But I could go in here and I could actually change this to number. You know, I could call this uh, um, time one of use. So say I've renamed this. But what you'll find is that the underlying field name may or may not change. So I call this one time of use as well. And you'll find you'll see that um, in the background, the system automatically re will rename the fields, but actually this formula will no longer work. So what you want to do is here is get the the ID of the column. So the column ID is kind of a back end or system name for a column. So you'll see in in both of these cases, the actual system name is numbers and numbers one. Now, if you look at your Monday, you might find, well, actually, I can't see that. So in order to see this, you need to go into Monday Labs and turn on developer mode. So if you look without this, you can't see the column IDs will make them very hard to write your formulas. Um, so I'd always recommend if you're doing work with formulas that you turn on your your you'll see here. Uh, this column here is called dupe of E. So, so in a lot of cases, the the column ID won't reflect the label that you have on the column. So if you're creating columns formulas, it's important to know the name of the, the column. Um, so we I'll just jump back here for a moment. Um, 
So as regards compatible columns, so we've we've lots of different types of columns in Monday. Um, most of them are supported by formulas, but there are some that are not. Um, so ones that you might regularly use for complicated systems would be things like mirror columns. Uh, they are not supported um, by the formulas field. Now, there are some plugins available out there by in in the App Store, um, things like VLOOKUP that allow you to do formulas on um, fields that are columns that are, are mirror columns. So that's worth having a look at if you do need to do that. Um, other things like tags that you can't run formulas on. So that's just, I suppose, uh, something to be aware of uh, when you're creating your formulas. Uh, and then another thing to be aware of is limitations. Um, so you can't apply, um, so formulas will only work across the board. They won't work down the board. So it's, it works horizontally, not vertically. So that's, I suppose, important to, to be aware of. So you wouldn't create a formula to sum up all the rows, for example, you can only work at it within the item. So the formula will only work across an item. Um, and uh, so I suppose then the next thing to, to be aware of is that sometimes what you think might work won't work. So I might just have a quick look at an example of that. So <clears throat> I just changed these back to the original names. Uh, labels I had, so numbers and numbers one. So very, the, the, the uh, a very simple example here is we want to check if two fields are equal. Um, so we're looking at if numbers and is equal to numbers one. Now, just to be aware when you're using formulas, if you want to refer to another column, you need to put the column name in curly brackets. So that's kind of down to, that's like syntax and takes a little bit of practice, but once you get familiar with that, um, it's pretty easy to do. Um, so this is a very simple one. Um, and what you might do is say, well, I want to find out if something's not equal. Um, and anyone who's familiar with, uh, if they're a developer or a coder, the not equal formula that you'd normally use is um, an exclamation mark and equal. But when we do that, we got an error. So we have some, I guess, workarounds to get that to work. And that's where we come into what I mentioned earlier, some of these hidden functions. So how have I implemented it? Um, I've used a function called not, okay? So when you go to the monday.com uh, formula, um, um, formulas page, this will give you a list, and I'll, I'll actually post this in the chat. Um, I can find it now. I'll post it now in a second. I just send this to you, the teacher. Would you mind just posting that in the chat? But um, this gives you a list of all the available functions. But interestingly enough, there's a whole list of other functions out there that are not here that you can use. And you, we've done some workshops on Monday and they're happy for us to use them. They, they will continue to be supported. Um, and uh, this is a good example. So where you want to do a comparison of where things are not equal, you can use the function not. Um, rather than what you would think would work. And this, I suppose, is a good example of uh, it. Formulas are not always exactly what you expect them to be. Um, and where do I find a little bit more information about that? It's from the Monday man. He has a, a page called Hidden Functions. So I'll just I'll post a link to that as well. Um, So this guy has some some great stuff on his website um, around formulas, and I'll just if this will load. I'm not sure why that's not loading. Um, I'll post the link to it now anyway. But uh, I'll just leave that load in the background. Um, 
but there's a whole list of these functions that um, you can use in addition to those that are documented on the, the Monday website. And quite often I find when we're implementing formulas, if you go there, you'll kind of find the answer that maybe isn't just on the monday.com uh, supply documentation. Um, so um, another, I suppose, good example of um, how we use formulas is an if statement. Now, obviously, these are all documented on that monday.com uh, link that I sent. Um, but an if statement is kind of a logical statement to compare two values and then you'll by default you'll either get a true or false but what you can do then is display something logical in english so in here we're saying if uh, the value in numbers one is less than or equal to the value in numbers true uh, so if that comparison is true then we display less than or equal and other, otherwise we display greater than so there's just a, i suppose an example of how to use formulas to display something more intelligible than true or false to a user. Now, if we if we jump into a board on how this these formulas might be used in in a more real world example, so less of the theory now and more of the practice. Um, so if we have a, a ticket management solution with SLAs and we have priority, so we have a bunch of tickets that have come into our help desk and um, we have a priority. So at the moment, this is set to medium and you can see our SLA in errors is 18. If we change that to high, all of a sudden the SLA has changed to nine errors. So how do we do that? We click in, we can see this just a kind of a simple if statement. So if the priority is high, set it to nine, and then we have a nested if. So otherwise, if it's priority is medium, it's 18. And then the kind of else is set it to 24. So if I set this go. priority to low, um, it'll drop to, to 24. Are we running out of time there, Letitia? Yeah, we just uh, one minute. Yeah, OK, so um, I'll, uh, I'll wrap up now, but there's just another example of how you could multiply numbers together to convert from SLA and hours to minutes. Um, but maybe I'll, I'll I'll flick it back to the to questions. Maybe um, people have questions before we we wrap up. I think yeah, Candy to. wanted to add something um, very quickly. Yeah, no, it was just to show how you can select those type of like the name of the columns. You know, the functions um, is is in the board. But you close the board. <laughs> So when you click in the formulas, yeah. So can you click there? Yeah, I'll do. I'll just swipe over to this one here. Yeah, so we have a new one here. So yeah, we can just click here and we'll get a list of our functions here. Yeah, yeah. So if statement, and it kind of prompts you. So as the online help, exactly. Yeah. So that's really good. Really interesting to see how formulas has moved on. And how things are growing. I think it, it, Monday, formulas can be a challenge for anyone, but practice is certainly the way to go. I know that I need a lot more practice when it comes to, to formulas, but I'll get there one of these days. Um, we'd welcome any questions. I know we're running out of time, but any questions you have at all with regards to Monday or, or you know, anything that's going on with your system, we'd love to hear from you. Um, if you don't feel like talking now, fully understand, pop it in the chat box. Um, and we'd love to hear back from you, but we, we do appreciate the questions. We, we love that kind of feedback from everyone. Uh, I know we're pretty much out of time at the moment. That, that just while you're waiting for questions there, the uh, the Monday man loaded eventually. I posted the link. Letitia will probably post it to the chat there. Yeah, we have it there. But uh, one of the things for the developers in the room, if there's any, anyone out there, Monday.com also supports what are called regular expressions. Now for... Uh, if you're not a developer or technically minded, this is probably well beyond where you want to go, but it, do, it does allow you to do very uh, complicated um, type formula. So it's probably something worth considering, you know, if you're getting a consultant to do some work for you and you want a very complicated implementation, uh, we do have that capability to use arrays and uh, regex and various other for replacements and substitutes. So 
no time to go through that today, but just worth knowing about these and things like calculating working days and various other things. And um, so that information is in the link as well. Brilliant. If nobody has any more questions, um, we thank you for your time. Um, we know we're this is the last one for 2022, but we do look forward to doing more in 2023. So on behalf of everybody here, wish you the best of the holidays and uh, we'll catch up again in 2023. Have a great day. Thank you.